ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له جل عن الشبيه والمثيل والكفء والند والنظير واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه وامينه على وحيه ارسله ربه رحمه للعالمين وحجه على العباد اجمعين فهذا الله تعالى به من الضلاله وبصر به من الجهاله وكثر به بعد القله واغنى به بعد العيله ولم به بعد الشتات وامن به بعد الخوف فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله الطيبين واصحابه الغر الميامين ما اتصلت عين بنظر ووعت اذن بخبر وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد ايها الاخوه الكرام اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله في السر والعلن فان الله جل وعلا امرنا بالتقوى كما جاء في سوره ال عمران يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وفي بدايه سوره النساء يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا وفي نهاية سورة الأحزاب يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعادنا الله منها جميعا ما جير بدس سيسر سن الإسلام Every year we go through a moment where the kufr and shirk they know no limits so much so that the muslim ummah is being affected by it in this part of the world in the western hemisphere and it is even worse for the muslim ummah when muslim ummah are far far away from the quran and the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the knowledge that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed upon muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam brought forth sahaba radiyallahu anhum ajma'in have taken those information from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam with open arms and whatever muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam abstained as well as prohibited the ummah from doing things sahaba radiyallahu anhum ajma'in were the first ones to absolutely stay away from these things from the prohibitions of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and for that the dalil is in surah al hashr when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the sahaba radiyallahu anhum ajma'in and this verse revealed upon muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ma atakum ar rasul fa khudhuh wa ma nahakum anhu fa antahu whatever the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought forth anything take it with open arms gladly wa ma nahakum anhu fa antahu whatever he prohibited you from abstain from it and of course they knew the significance and they put a lot of emphasis when it comes to obeying rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because they understood man yuti'ir rasul faqad ata'a allah they were the first one to understood they are the foremost people of the muslim ummah to understand what obedience to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam meant leading to ultimate obedience of allah rabbul izati wal jalal and they knew what will happen even if they were sahabi they knew the consequence of disobeying rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they knew this verse when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed upon muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying that wa man yushaqiq ar-rasul whosoever op- opposes the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam whosoever opposes the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam min ba'di ma tabayyana lahu al-huda when the huda or the guidance has been made clear to him ويتبع غير سبيل المؤمنين and follows the way other than the way of the believers نوله ما تولى will give them what they seek ونصله جهنم we will connect whatever they sought to jahannam وساءت مصيرا what an evil destination that is الله رب العزه والجلال later on he said ان الله لا يغفر ان يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive and will never forgive when anyone 
puts partners beside Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. When anyone commits shirk, and he will forgive whatever is below the shirk. Whosoever commits shirk, then he went furthest away from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, furthest astray. This is the consequence of shirk. And the time that we are in, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it is something to do with shirk. It is something to do with kufr wal ayyadu billah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we are talking about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. The common understanding in this day and age at this time is that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam was born on the 25th of December. But if we were to look back as to how the Christianity came to this conclusion or where they came up with this story that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam was born on, to, on the 25th of December, it will absolutely shock all the Muslim Ummah first, as we have no knowledge, we just know that we shouldn't celebrate Christmas. But we, most of us are nowhere in, 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 uh, close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sunnah. Never mind the Quran that Allah revealed upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we were to know the ayat of Al-Quran Al-Kareem that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, talking about the family of Maryam alayhi salam, Ali Imran, talking about Maryam alayhi salam, the chapter called Maryam, talking about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, not only in Surah Al-Imran, but also in Surah Al-Nisa, but also in Surah Al-Ma'idah, but also in other parts of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, as well as in Surah Maryam. So these chapters, in this day and age, they do have significance, not only for the Muslim Ummah, but for the whole mankind. But the reality is this, that when we are nowhere near the Quran Al-Kareem that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we are nowhere near the obedience to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we are not understanding or not even pondering upon the understanding of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu ajma'een as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was their teacher, and the way that Sahaba radiallahu anhu ajma'een learned from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they passed it on to the tabi'een as well as atba'a tabi'een radiallahu anhu ajma'een. Then of course, whatever the calamity that we are going through, we have earned. Whatever the masa'ib that we are going through, the bala or the trials and tribulations that we are going through, we are to blame ourselves. But guess what? I've got nothing to do with this. Not in my name, we say it, yet when it comes to evaluation, self-evaluation, we are nowhere to be found. Still, we want to save our own skin. That's the reality. And this is leading us to the disobedience of Allah. As a result, we are being upon misguidance and we chose to be upon misguidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to misguide us. We know for a fact that Allah misguides, as Allah guides so when we are depriving ourselves from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being disobedient to Allah and his book Al-Quran Al-Kareem, by being disobedient to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sunnah, then we are to blame ourselves only. Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, about him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Imran, Indeed, the example of Isa alayhi salatu was salam is like the example of Adam alayhi salatu was salam. As we know, Allah said, خَلَقَهُ مِن تُرَاب ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him, meaning Adam alayhi salam, our father, from turab, from clay. ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ Then he said to him, كُنْ بِي فَيَكُونَ And it became. This is Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. What we see in this day and age, that when we are being approached by the Christians, saying that Allah, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam is the word of Allah, meaning that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam says and it becomes, in reality, we as Muslims do not have the information as to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant when he said, Ya ahlal kitab la taghlu fi dinikum wa la taqulu ala Allah illa al haq. Innama al masihu Isa ibn Maryam Rasulullah wa kalimatu. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed the people of the scripture, the people of the books, Al-Yahud wa Nasara, the Jews and the Christians, Allah prohibited them from committing extremism. 
لا تغلو في دينكم do not be extreme in your way of life in your deen and do not say ولا تقولوا على الله about الله سبحانه وتعالى إلا الحق except the truth إنما المسيح عيسى بن مريم رسول الله وكلمته indeed the Messiah عيسى son of Maryam Allah's messenger رسول الله وكلمته and his word what does it mean when Allah سبحانه وتعالى said that عيسى عليه الصلاة والسلام is the word of Allah Allah سبحانه وتعالى said ألقاها إلى مريم وروح منه Allah سبحانه وتعالى sent جبرائيل عليه الصلاة والسلام and of course we know when جبرائيل عليه الصلاة والسلام or جبريل عليه الصلاة والسلام approached مريم in the form of human in سورة مريم Allah سبحانه وتعالى talks about it then Allah سبحانه وتعالى by by his word when Allah said كن that was the ruh that was actually given and later on that is the word and the result of that kun is Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. It was the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled his command by bringing Isa alayhi salatu wasalam into existence without any male intervention. So this is the miraculous birth of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And the time that he was born in Surah Maryam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions فأجاءها المخاض إلى جذع النخلة قالت يا ليتني مت قبل هذا وكنت نسيا منسيا. After giving birth to Isa عليه الصلاة والسلام, she was still worried. Maryam عليه السلام, mother of Isa عليه الصلاة والسلام, she was still worried as to what the people are gonna say. She said يا ليتني مت قبل هذا. I wish that I died before this. وكنت نسيا منسيا. And I would have been from the forgotten forgotten ones. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَنَادَاهَا مِنْ تَحْتِهَا أَلَّا تَحْزَنِي قَدْ جَعْلَ رَبُّكِ تَحْتَكِ ثَرِيَّةً وَهُزِّي إِلَيْكِ بِجِذْعِ النَّخْلَةً She was below a tree when she was saying this, when, what, what feelings that she was going through. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded her to do what? هُزِّي إِلَيْكِ بِجِذْعِ النَّخْلَةً Shake that tree, the tree of dates. تُسَاقِطْ عَلَيْكِ رُطَمًا جَنِيَّةً That the rutab, the ripe dates, it will fall. فَكُولِي وَشْرَبِي وَقَرِّ عَيْنَا فَإِمَّا تَرَيْنَّ بِنَ الْبَشَرِ أَحَدًا فَقُولِي إِنِّ النَّذَرْتُ لِلْرَحْمَانِ صَوْمًا فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيَّةً So, the time that you would see dates when the weather is hot. What has that got to do, the 25th of December, with the dates? In this part of the world, when we are talking about the 25th of December, even in the Arab, uh, uh, Arab countries, or even in Sham for that matter, 25th of December has got nothing to do with this. Rather, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam was born when the weather was hot. We're talking about between July and August or between April and August for that matter. So that has got nothing to do with the 25th of December. So where did this 25th of December come from? The historians, and it is upon us actually to investigate, to become detectives, for the sake of defending the deen of Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal, not only that to defend all the prophets and messengers alayhim salatu wasalam from the falsehood. The way that they're attributing Isa alayhi salatu wasalam's birth to the wrong date. As if that wasn't enough, they also say that he is son of, son of God. Son of Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. And in Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَا لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّا تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْهُ وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضُ وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ هَدَّا Ponder upon these three verses. When someone says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, has taken a son, Allah said that you have made a grievous mistake. The skies become torn apart, tear, each, uh, tear apart from each other. Even the earth, they split. The earth that we are walking up on, it splits. And the, the mountains, they become like cottons. They literally shake and they become crushed by the will and permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the skies have. The earth has, the mountain has. This is the reality of Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. When somebody attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a son. When we forget to defend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from such heinous crime. 
and we bring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the manzilla of his creation, know that we are actually furthest away from the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have got nothing in our arsenal to defend Allah rabbul izzati wal jalal. Allah rabbul izzati wal jalal said, laysa ka mithlihi shay. Still we don't ponder, ponder upon this particular verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when we are talking about the 25th of December, three things are worth mentioning. You have the Nordic people, the ones who are in the extreme north living. Then you have the Greek people. Then you have the Roman people. These three groups of people or three types of people, they have one thing in common, that is paganism. And I will tell you how. Feast of the Twelve Nights, it was something celebrated by the people of the north. From the 25th of December going all the way to the 6th of January. What they used to do is that at that time they were not seeing the sunlight, especially in the extreme north, closer to the North Pole. They didn't see the sunlight. So whenever they used to see the sunlight, they considered the sun to be the giver of the force of, uh, force of life. Giving force of life. So much so that they would raise their hands and they would start worshipping the sun. Billah. So it is Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal who gives us life and it is Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal who gives us death. And in Surah Al-Mulk Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about it in the second verse. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيِّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا In Surah Al-Baqarah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions when Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was confronting Nimrud. إِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّيَ الَّذِي يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتِ So these verses are ev enough evidence to do what? To confirm that it is Allah who is the giver of life, it is Allah who is the one who causes us to die. But these people in the north, they started worshipping the sun and they considered the sun to be the giver of life. As if that wasn't enough. The Christmas tree that we have in our households, والعياذ بالله, if the Muslims are safe from these trees, alhamdulillah, that they are not considering. But what really is painful when we see the Muslim business establishments are putting the Christmas tree in, the, in their shops. Even the decoration. Are you that inferior? That you don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You fear the people who have got nothing to do with Christianity whatsoever. Who have got nothing to do with Christmas whatsoever. Yet you want to please them. It's just a culture. Even the Christians, they have lost their way. So, 25th of December, this Christmas tree, it is the people of the north who brought this. They started cutting the tree. At that time, there were houses when they had the chimneys. And next to the chimneys, they would put those uh, fir tree, the everlasting uh, tree, uh, tree, as they call it. Even they started worshipping the tree, this Christmas tree that we are seeing. The way that it is now bringing money. Allahul Musta'an, the ones who sell these trees. Even in, during the extreme cold weather, these tree still you would see them to be not, uh, not being damaged. They are still alive. But again, it is from the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead of showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they started worshipping the tree alongside worshipping the sun. <laughs> and when they brought the tree, after cutting it from the root into the household, next to the chimneys, they started putting the mistletoes on the top of the tree. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna ruqa wa tama'ima wa tiwala shirk. Quite often you hear this hadith. That the tama'im, the amulets, the mistletoes and tiwala, the charms, the love charms for that matter, they are all shirk. The belief that they had at that time was that these tree and the mistletoes, it is to ward the evil off from the household, especially from the 25th of December till the 6th of January. So this was the story with the people of the north. Something is also uh, uh, worth mentioning with the people of the north is that at that time they started to see the goblins, as we see in this day and age, with the green dress. Then you have somebody called Santa Claus. But it was someone called Mithra or the Mithras. Even in this day and age, you will not find information about Mithra. Due to the state intervention in this part of the world, in Europe, what they did is that they removed the story of the Mithra. It was Mithra who was born on this particular date of the 25th of December. And due to Mithra, they, uh, they came up with this that seventh day would be the Sunday. 
because that is the son that they were worshipping. So Mithra is someone who eventually died for the sins of the people of the north. Does it ring any bell? It does. Because 400 years after the ascension of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, what you would see is this. Pope Julius I, he actually incorporated this 25th of December into the Christianity. And later on, this ideology that somebody died for someone else's sin actually came from this. As for the ones who still opposed the Trinity, concept of Trinity, the ones who opposed those who were the true followers of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, up until the appearance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam being Nabi, they still opposed it. In 325, year 325, King Constantine I of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, Rome, he actually was christened. He became Christian. He accepted the religion of Christianity. And that is when he also brought the concept of Trinity. Even at that time, there were opposers who were the followers of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And they opposed the concept of Trinity. Yet, you would see the people who follow the Trinity have overpowered them due to the state inter intervention. And part of that state intervention is that they remove the information about the Mithra so that they cannot connect it with the 25th of December or Jesus for uh, dying for somebody else's sin. Billah. Then you have Bacchanalia, something to do with drinking a lot of wine, dr uh, playing a lot of sports, and also many acts, meaning acting. Somebody called Bacchus, who was the Greek deity of sports, wine, and acts or plays. Then you have Saturnalia, the Roman people that they used to do. And Saturnalia is something to do with their deity called Saturn. Something to do again with the sun worshipping. Same thing. They would have the concept of drinking, concept of killing, concept of uh, having sports and everything that you can think of. Down the line, when we, have the, uh, when we have someone called Saul, later on who became Paul, who by the Christians is more quoted than Isa alayhi salatu wasalam or ayyadu billah. The followers of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, those who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without any partners being put beside him, they rejected uh, Saul. And later on, it was from the followers of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam called Barnabas who actually accompanied uh, Saul. But down the line, wherever Saul went, what he actually did was letting the Muwahideen, those who truly worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the followers of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he was actually torturing them. So much so that wherever the Roman gladiators were killing each other in the Colosseums, whether it was in Greece, whether it was in current day Italy, wherever the Colosseums were in Europe, you would see that the followers of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, those who worshipped Allah alone, they were brought into the Colosseums so that they can be killed, they can be tortured by the dangerous animals. Those animals that were poked and made hungry so that they can attack, as it is the nature of the animals. So later on, Saul became Paul. Even Barnabas left him. So when we fail to understand what the message of Al-Islam is. Forget about the message of Christianity. Then of course, we have nothing but loss in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. We are prone to commit sins as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Yusuf, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِ إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءِ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءِ Indeed, the soul is prone to committing sins. And we are fa falling into sins without realizing it. Knowingly and unknowingly we are falling into sins. So much so that with these fallings into sins, we are depriving ourselves from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala return us to the Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us with the knowledge of Al-Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ameen. Nafa'ani Allahu wa iyyakum bima fihi min al-ayat wa dhikr al-hakim wa bihadhi Sayyid al-Mursaleen. Aqulu ma tasma'una wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-Muslimin min kulli dhammin fastaghfiruhu wa tubu ilayh. Innahu huwa tawabu al-Rahim. Innahu huwa al-Ghafur al-Rahim.
الحمد لله الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العلم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم ارزقنا علما نافعا في الدين والدنيا والآخرة يا سميع الدعاء ما جير بدرس السيسر سنة الإسلام the following message is about the people who are involved in the field of da'wah when they are having a conversation with Christians. Quite often we fail to realize that they are upon misguidance. In order for them to actually receive the message of Islam, instead of quoting the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Al-Quran Al-Kareem as well as from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa we end up quoting their verses that are full of faults, that are full of fabrication, that are full of anything and everything that you can think of to be falsehood, to be of falsehood. So when we are lacking the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of pondering upon them, when we are lacking the recitation of Al-Quran al kareem when we do not know the actual meaning of the words related to Isa alayhi salatu was salam, related to Maryam alayhi salam, related to family of Maryam alayhi salam, then of course whatever that the people of Baath al quote, we try to counter them with what they have in their book. And that is not the Islamic approach, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, one should take. It goes to show that we are neglecting the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It goes to show that Islam means nothing to us. And quite often those who are into quoting the biblical references, not knowing that they are of falsehood, we are glorifying things that are not from haqq. We are abandoning Al-Quran al kareem We are even not realizing that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would be the khasm for us, uh, against us on the day of Al Qiyamah. He's gonna stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he would say this as in Surah Al Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Waqala Rasul, Ya Rabbi inna qawmi takhadu hadha al Quran mahajura. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, Oh my Lord, indeed my nation has taken Al Quran as an abandonment. More than 200 languages pretty much, or about 200 languages pretty much are being utilized for the interpretation of Al-Quran Al-Kareem. No language has been spared, walillahi alhamdulillah minna, to understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As it is preserved in Arabic language, Allah made it easy to remember Al-Quran Al-Kareem, we do not still quote the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we are involved in dialogue with the Christians, and we bring their references, Actually, we are showing how inferior we Muslims are. Allahul Musta'an. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said, نَحْنُ قَوْمٌ أَعَزَّنَ اللَّهُ بِالْإِسْلَامِ فَإِذَا بْتَغَيْنَ الْعِزَّةِ بِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ أَذَلَّنَ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us honor. We are a nation that Allah has given us izzah. With what? With the religion of al-Islam. If we were to seek izzah from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and part of that is that we are actually quoting the references that are known to be falsehood, even the Christians themselves have ikhtilaf in that, we are seeking actually dhillah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will humiliate us. And know this for a fact, if you are lacking certainty by not quoting the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the face of the Christians, then you are actually no different than them. Why? Because when you quote the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would have this certainty, you would have this yaqeen that Allah is with you. Just recite words like, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَنُ وَلَدَا لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّا You would see the fitrah of those very Christians who are trying to overpower you with their beauty, with their so-called polite manners and whatnot, you would see that you are shaking their course. Try to quote the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Arabic, you will see their fitra will change. It is something from the experience I'm telling you this. And there are du'at who have experienced this, who have done this experiment. When the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are being recited, you would see how the fitra actually falls into its right place. And that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. When the fitra is directed to the worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the recitation of the words, even though, even those who are not Muslims, you would see wonders. They would be more receptive towards the religion of Islam. 
But when you utilize other ways to have a discussion with the Christians from their books, know that you already failed 10 times. Even if you try to argue with their words, even if you think that you have the upper hand, it would be pointless. Have the Quran al Kareem, have the Sunnah of Rasulullah as your ultimate weapons in your arsenal. Allah will be with you. It is a promise, promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in failed. No single Sahabi failed. No single Tabi'i failed. No single atba- uh, uh, followers of the Tabi'i have ever failed in terms of propagating the message of Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal to the non Muslims. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us with the Quran al Kareem and with the Sunnah of Rasulullah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the knowledge that would be, inshallah, Aziz, beneficial for the people who are not upon Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the husn al khatima, the good ending. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us death upon the religion of Islam. Allahumma ameen. Ibad Allah, Ialamu anna Allah, Amarakum bisaratu wa salami ala nabiyyi, wa kala fi muhkamit tanzil, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yu salun ala nabiyyi, ya ayuha ladina amanu, salu alayhi wa salimu taslim. وعن انس بن مالك رضي الله عنه ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من صلى علي صلاه واحده صلى الله عليه عشر صلوات وحطت عنه عشر خطيئات رواه الامام احمد في مسنده فصلوا وسلموا على سيد الاولين والاخرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد ورضى الله عن خلفائه الراشدين الأئمة المهديين الذين قضوا بالحق وبه كانوا يعدلون أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة أجمعين وعنا معهم بعفوك ومنك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الكفر والكافرين وانصر عبادك المؤمنين المستضعفين في كل بلدان المسلمين يا رب العالمين اللهم كل المستضعفين عونا وظهيرا وهيئ لهم من لدنك وليا ونصيرا اللهم علي باليهود المعتدين وسائر الكفرة الظالمين اللهم اقذف الرعب في قلوبهم وأنزل بهم بأسك الذي لا يرد لا يرد عن القوم المجرمين يا قوي يا عزيز ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين ربنا أتمم لنا نورنا واعف عنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وأنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل جليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون